Hello everyone, it's the weekend. Welcome to Massey United Insurance's Line and Length. It's the cricket programme. We really look at the sport, not only in the region, but internationally as well. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Hello to all of our friends, especially watching on Digicel Sports Max. Well, we've got a good show for you today. We're going to head down to the University of the West Indies uh, by the Floyd Reefer Pavilion and speak to Richie Richardson. You know, he's just got a very big post. He's going to be a match referee for the ICC, leaving the West Indies cricket team as manager at the end of the year. We're going to talk to him and find out how he feels about that position and also how he feels about the state he's leaving the team in at this stage. Carlos Brathwit, one of the West Indies team, Bright Sparks, spoke with him. He's very excited about going to Sri Lanka and perhaps making his test debut. And he also tells us about a new entrepreneurship venture that he is uh, seeking uh, to continue. We spoke about Floyd Reefer just now, about his pavilion. He's going to be in the studio with us because the West Indies under-15 team recently came back from England and uh, Floyd was actually on that tour as one of the coaches. And we're going to hear from him about how well they did. Remember last week we spoke to Franklin Stevenson about another uh, under-15 team who went away. Now Floyd is going to tell us about this West Indies under-15 team, uh, which was a separate tour. Lots to discuss and talk about. Plus, we're also hearing that a man is not too happy that there's no Bravo or Pollard in his team. Yes, you're watching. Massey, United Insurance's Line and Length. The West Indies team assembled at the University of the West Indies KFL campus for what is a pre-camp before their tour to Sri Lanka. Watch under the careful eye of the chairman of selectors, Clive Lloyd, the former West Indies captain. The team went through many paces at the UWI, Coach Phil Simmons, who has been watching them carefully and working especially with the feeling aspect of the team, had his slips cordon in effect for most of the time. And then there were lots of fielding drills headed by Sir Curtly Ambrose as well, who was there to ensure that the team gets ship shape before they head off for that tour to Sri Lanka, which is two tests, three ODIs and two T20s. But one of the main things happening in the West Indies camp over the last 24 hours has been the announcement that Richie Richardson, the current manager, will indeed be leaving his post at the end of the Australian tour at the end of the year and he'll be joining the International Cricket Council as a match referee. It was a pleasure to catch up with him. First of all, Sir Richie, um, I'm sure that is something that you're looking forward to doing. Yeah, most certainly. Um, I'm very grateful to the ICC um, for giving me the opportunity to continue to represent. You know, um, I love the game of cricket. Cricket has done a lot for me and I look forward to continuing serving the, great, the game that I love so, so much. How, does, how did this opportunity come about for you to be a match referee with the ICC and what would it entail? Well, um, I heard that uh, one of the referees were going to retire, um, so I submit an application and I went through the process and I was successful. Um, obviously match referees have a massive responsibility. Every match that they officiate in they are in total control. They've got to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Um, they're in control of the umpires, um, ground staff um, and they just basically has to make sure that everything is in place, everything goes well and then report back to the ICC. You're kind of completing almost all the tasks now in cricket. You're a player, a captain, manager, you coach as well, and now a match referee. Um, it's just another facet of the game that Richard Richardson, Sir Richard Richardson, is, is enjoying. Um, out of what you have done so far, which has been the most pleasurable for you? Um, well, they've all been very challenging. I have to say, being a player is what really made me. Um, I've had to work extremely hard as a youngster to first of all to make the West Indies team and to maintain myself my position in the team so to me that that was the hardest um, being a team manager was quite challenging but um, you know I was able to fit in very quickly and adapt and, and adjust to all of that, what I had to do and I must say that I've enjoyed um, that, that position and I continue to enjoy that position and I will enjoy it until the end of my term um, early next year and I'm um, looking forward to, to the new role. Um, it's going to be different, going to be tough, but I believe that I can rise to the challenge. And, you know, I, I just want to be able to continue to make a contribution to the great game of cricket. How do you feel about the state that you're leaving this West Indies team in in a, in a bit of a rebuilding process? Well, um, 
I, the Western Cricket Board selectors have decided to invest in some young players and I feel that I'm going to miss out in a sense because I love working with young players and, and I believe that I'll be able to make a significant contribution to some of these young players. But I have to say that um, I think the, the test team is in good hands. Um, Jason Holder is a, a solid young um, cricketer who's got tremendous attributes as a, as a leader and I believe that he's going to do very, very well. Um, of, of course, from time to time I will be in touch and I will come across Jason and, and a number of the young players and most certainly they're, they're going to get my advice um, from time to time because I will always always be, West, be a West Indian. But um, I think there's hope for us, really, and if we continue to work hard and invest in the youngsters and give them the opportunities, I think that in years to come we can see these youngsters maturing and coming through and establishing themselves and, and, and things can get better for us. So. Um, I still have a few months working with them, so I'm going to maximize my efforts with them to, to try and leave as much with them as possible. And, uh, and I'm pleased. I'm pleased with, with, with what we have so far and uh, if they can buy into what the coaches have to offer and, 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 and commit to working hard, I'm sure we will see improvements. So Richie, I wish you all the best in your, your new venture. Thank you very much. Always great to catch up with Sir Curly Ambrose. Of course, he is here with the West Indies team. but. Playing cricket for a good cause um, in the um, upcoming game, of course, it's the uh, Dominica Relief Fund. You said you're coming out of retirement, so currently to, to throw down a couple of overs. How are you feeling about what happened in Dominica? Did it touch you in a big way? It certainly did. I mean, we are so close to Dominica, and a lot of Dominicans lived in Antigua as well. And we never expected that kind of devastation until I saw it on TV. And you realized how the magnitude of it and so many lives were lost. It was very touching. And even though I really don't want to play any cricket, I think that it's a, it's a worthy cause. And if I can go and trundle an over or two to help the cause, I'd be more than happy to do it. Do you have any fond memories of playing cricket in Dominica or uh, against any uh, Leeward Island players, Windward Island players from, from Dominica? Well, I've never played in Dominica, unfortunately. All through my Leeward Islands and Western East career, I've never played in Dominica. As a matter of fact, the first time I went to Dominica is to do commentary. And the people, they were so receptive, they didn't want me to leave. You know, so uh, it's an opportunity to do something for them. And I'm quite happy to, to bowl a couple overs on Saturday. Now, you know, you look at the fact that the, the West Indies team, the West Indies Cricket Board, have, have reached out to the, the people there in Dominica. You, you expect to have a good crowd, you expect to have a good game. Yes, I expect a big crowd, first, first and foremost. Because, I mean, because of the, the devastation, I think that, Everyone in Barbados and surrounding neighboring islands should at least make the effort to come here so we can raise some money for, for Dominica. And the game to me is, is secondary because the turnout is very important. But of course, there are some, some big name players on, on show on Saturday. And um, hopefully we can turn back the clock just a little bit and give some excitement. You're still looking very fit. There's one thing about Sir Curly Ambrose, he has not lost any of his fitness. Saw you out in the middle there doing some uh, some catching and some throws. How is the team looking uh, towards Sri Lanka? Yeah, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we are very confident. So far the camp has been going well. We have no issues at the moment. And I believe that, you know, working hard, you will achieve great things. And that's exactly what we're doing with the guys. And so far it's going really good and we're very, very confident going to Sri Lanka. Right, and in, in terms of the Sri Lanka itself, they're also rebuilding a bit, rebuilding team too without Sangakara, uh, without Jai Wardena. Yes, two, two, two great players. And without them, it's going to be difficult to fill that void. So we're hoping that we can go there and capitalize you know, on, on them not being around and hopefully win both Test and One Day Series. And finally, so at least enjoying your role as the big bowling coach still? Yes, I'm still enjoying it. You know, um, I know all the guys even before I joined the team. And I mean, going around the circuit, you know, I kept talking to them about fast bowling. So it was very easy for me to fit into the West Indies lineup. And having done two years with the CCC, sort of really prepped me for, 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 for this big time. So I'm quite enjoying my role. You know, all the guys respect me highly, have no issues with them. And we have a good coaching staff. I mean, Simmons, someone I've played with, Stuart Williams, the same thing. You know, manager Richie Richardson. You know, so, I mean, a guy that I've, I've known for years, so it was very, very easy for me to fit into this system, and I'm enjoying it. So currently Ambrose talking with us on Mass United Insurance's line of length. We'll be right back. 
Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. So it's a great pleasure to talk to Carlos Brathwit. Uh, Carlos, first of all, you know, the West Indies team embarking on a tour of Sri Lanka. How are you looking forward to that challenge? Um, it's been a busy year for you. Um, well, it's going to be a good challenge. I've um, been over there and captain the A team over there la late last year. So I wouldn't say I'm familiar with the surroundings, but I have experienced them already and I know it's going to be very challenging on the body and most importantly on the mind. Carlos, you know, you look at the fact that this West Indies team is a relatively young side. Um, you said the challenge is, is going to be a, a pretty tight one, but overall Sri Lanka themselves are also rebuilding. Have you looked at that aspect of the, the tour? Yes, um, I think if we can be fair, um, this is probably our better chance to win a series in Sri Lanka for quite a while. Um, they're also going through a transition phase and it's not going to be easy, but if we be fair with ourselves and if we be honest, we say it's going to be easier than in the past, or it should be on paper at least. It's just a matter of us going there, being professional, um, understanding the challenge that's about to come our way, and then being prepared to go tooth and nail and really get stuck in and come what may stick together and come out on top. Now, in the last couple of years, Carlos's, Carlos Bathwick's game has really transformed, has really changed a lot. What have you been doing that has um, been so special, that has uh, you know, propelled your career in the last couple of years? Um, I won't put it down to one thing. I'll just say, if I could put it down to a couple of things, it would probably be self-belief. Um, just having a little more self-belief in my game. Um, also, a little more awareness of my strengths. And I think one of the turning points in my career has only been just a short while ago, but my knock against Australia in the presence 11, um, it really gave me the self-belief, the confidence and the courage to go out there and play a carefree, wild, somewhat smart um, brand of aggressive cricket and I think that is what I'll be using as a template to move forward in my career. A lot of people will look at your game and say, well, this is a big, tall guy who is an all-rounder, uh, might be more suited strictly for uh, T20s and, and one internationals, but are you sweet on test cricket? Um, actually, it's the form of the game that I love the most. Um, I think when you play a test cricket, you get a real test, a real challenge. And I appreciate the final parts of cricket, so sometimes I can watch a test match and just enjoy a six or a seven over spell where um, a guy is beating the bat and watching that guy come through that and get on, go on to score 100 and basically bat through a tight spot for his team is something that I appreciate. So definitely test cricket is one of my passions. Final question, Carlos, your back company, Trident Sports, seems to be going very well. You made a donation recently. How did that come about? I um, was in Ireland 2009. Um, didn't think I'll be where I am today, so just trying to set up myself for the future. Um, always wanted to be an entrepreneur and always wanted to give back, and that was my way of being able to kill two birds with one stone, being an entrepreneur and running my own company and having the opportunity to give back to community schools and what's not. Carlos, all the best in Sri Lanka and beyond. Thanks. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Welcome back to Mass United Insurance's Dinah Length and join us in the studio, Floyd Reefer. Uh, he's worn many hats, but the most recent hat, uh, Floyd, that some people may not have known about, is that you were the assistant coach on the West Indies on the 15 team tour to the UK. Tell us a bit about that. Well, the tour, the tour, um, Andrew, the tour was a very good tour. Um, it gave the youngsters the opportunity to play in cricket in different uh, conditions. You know, um, some of the guys adjusted, some didn't. You know, that's expected, but, um, you know, in future tours and stuff like that, I guess the West Indies will have to give the guys more time to acclimatise to, um, to the conditions and to the weather and stuff like that. But 
all in all, you know, we played well. Uh, we managed to get in four games, which we won throughout the four. So, and they had some good performances from some of the guys. Um, Nicole Rifa, he batted very well. He scored three half centuries. The skipper, um, Kala Sharan, he batted well. Um, Young Turton also had a couple scores. So, you know, the guys performed well as a team, as a unit. The guys gelled well together. So it was a, it was a good trip. Uh, um, and obviously with the impact of you as an assistant coach, Courtney Walsh as the coach and Robert Samuels, uh, three former West Indian players of some repute. Um, the, the uh, guys knew, knew of your type of performance and obviously the kind of knowledge that you would have had of the English conditions assisted despite the, the short nature of the time that you had. Yes, of course. Um, you know, we, we worked well as a management team. You know, obviously we knew one another for, for years. We played against one another. We have a lot of respect for one another, so I thought we worked well together and we, all we did was just pass on a lot of knowledge to the guys. You know, we can't like, overpower them with knowledge, but we, we, tried to, we did our best in terms of, you know, presenting the, the, the conditions and explaining to them how to play and what not to do and stuff like that. How, did you, how would you assess the players? Because there's been some discussion in the Caribbean about levels of development in, across the board and a suggestion most recently about that the same level of development must be done across the board. How would you assess the players? Because these were the best from the regional on the 15 tournament. Well, I think that um, obviously coaching, coaching is have a, a lot to, to do, a, a lot to, to be done in the Caribbean. Um, especially when you go like, to the Vainers and Leras, obviously, you know, these guys have to improve on the, their coaching skills and stuff like that so in terms of developing youth. You know, Barbados has a good structure, Trinidad, Jamaica, but I think that, you know, the WACB or, um, have to put together a program where that coaching at all levels must be the same throughout the Caribbean. We have to develop our own coaching manual in terms of developing our players. You know, you can tell that even on the trip, you can tell some of the guys that were exposed, you know, to better coaching than, uh, than others. You know, mm -hmm. some of the guys adjusted really well, others uh, struggled mm -hmm. to adjust. So even though there were the premier performers from the regional under 15, when they were thrown into a different, and, and England is a completely different condition, even though it would have been August and summer, I, I suspect there was still some chill around. Yeah, it, so it was cool. You had some cold days, you know, um, had a lot of rain as well. You know, people were saying in England that that's probably the worst week in August that we had, <laughs> you know, so it's unfortunate that the guys didn't get in all the cricket games. You know, most of the guys were looking forward to it. And as the tour went on, you could see like some of the guys started to get into their own, but thing that happened, you know, it was probably it was the end of the trip. So, you know, in the future, as I said before that, you know, we have to give the guys more time you know, to adjust, you know, and get some practice games in there, you know, so that the fellas that will take a little longer to adjust, you know, and give them the opportunity. And in terms of the, the, the coaching and stuff like that there, you know, we can, we can unite and come together and, and have one, one coaching manual throughout the Caribbean. I think that can happen. We need to do that in order to, to develop our cricketers the way we want it to develop. <clears throat> in terms of the coaching as well, you know, I mean, in this manual, when you get that on the 15 stage, it's certain certain things that on the 15 cricketers should be able to do. Mm. So before he goes to on the 17, he should be able to do basic stuff that need to be done and, as a, and, on and the 15 on, level on before the he goes on to another on level 17, on and move on on the 17 or the 19. And that's how we can we can really develop our youngsters. In your current capacity, though, Floyd, as the coach of the UE team and CCC as well, um, you have been incorporated several players from across the across territories, not just Barbadians. Uh, at one stage, we called it the Barbados team, Barbados Second Eleven. But now I think it, uh, many more players have been incorporated. Um, and have you been trying to input the, what the suggestion you've made? Because you probably received players who were at different levels, but had ability, so you utilize the ability which they had. Yes, of course. Uh, when, when I go scouting, you know, I, 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 have, a, I have an eye for talent. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I see talented guys, don't matter where they come from, you know, I try to incorporate them into the program. Obviously, some will be at different levels, and it's, it's, you know, it's disheartening that when they get to that stage that on the night, then over 19 years old that they still have basic, problems, basic flaws and flaws problems in, in, in mm -hmm. the game. You know, so when they come to you, we, what we do, we iron out those flaws. We, we, you know, we do video, we show them, and then we iron out those flaws, do a lot of remedial work, and try to get them to the stage where they can play first-class cricket. I think that we've been very successful at that as well. 
The CEO of the West Indies Cricket Board has recently said that the Surgical High Performance Center will soon be no more, but there will be high performance centers across the board in the region. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, I, I thought the HBC had done well uh, for West Indies Cricket. You know, and a lot of the guys that came through the HBC are representing West Indies now. Well, Some of right the guys now, that yeah. passed through CCC as well. Mm -hmm. You know, CCC and HBC, you know, the two programs. A lot of guys that pass through these two programs have represented the West Indies. So, I mean, if, if the CEO said he wants to take it all around the Caribbean, I hope that he has the personnel and the equipment and everything that to make sure that it's done properly. Right, because there is a, what, what, yeah, the, the module, or the, they call it, I think there was a particular time frame, and the guys were together as, as a group, as a team, as you mentioned, and, and team and group dynamics are very important for any successful outfit. Yes, it is. Um, it's good to keep the guys together. You know, I always said, even in the HPC, you know, um, you have in guys in there every two years, but you should, you know, the HPC should have been broken down into two segments where you have the guys coming in and then the 18 guys, mm -hmm. you know, should have been passing through the HPC on a regular basis, you know, keeping the guys together, preparing them for test cricket. Well, you, you mentioned test cricket. Um, we're going to be hearing, of course, uh, the West Indies team off to Sri Lanka in a couple of days. Your thoughts on this tour? We've been asking everyone, Jason Holder, captain of the West Indies team, Craig Braffitt, vice captain, a very youthful team, apart from uh, Dennis Ramden and Marlon Samuels and perhaps Jerome Taylor, a uh, very youthful, youthful West Indies team. Your thoughts, uh, Sri Lanka first and then Australia? Well, <laughs> Sri Lanka, you know, the, the pitches in Sri Lanka are good. And you've played there, huh? Yeah, I've played there already. The pitches are very good. And yes, we have a young team, a young captain, and, you know, we have to rally behind the team still. Um, Sri Lanka is going through a transition stage as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, it'll be even match, evenly match. Mm -hmm. You know, once these guys, you know, go there and, and perform, play together as a team, gel well together and do the things that they know, they know they can do. Just go there, if you're a batsman, bat. Your job is to bat, bat as long as possible. Your job is to bowl this bowl, be disciplined in your bowling performances. How difficult um, to play in Sri Lanka? You mentioned good pitches, but how difficult generally in terms of the conditions? Well, first you have to adjust to the time. Mm -hmm. The time difference, you know, I think it's what, six to eight hours time difference. Mm -hmm. So you gotta adjust to that first, and then the food mm -hmm. as well. You know, then outside is heated, very hot, mm -hmm. you know, very humid that morning sometimes. When they play there, you come to the ground around 8 o'clock in the morning, there's a lot of dew around. Mm -hmm. uh, but by quarter past nine, everything's dried up, you know, the heat, even when you after warm-ups, you got to change the socks and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So guys have to be really fit. Well, I, see the, I saw the guys doing a lot of training at UE mm -hmm. for the last week, so I'm sure that the guys would but at some good performances, and I spoke to young Kim Roach yesterday, and he's chomping at the bit. He said to me he's going to get five wickets the first test. So, but if he gets a if, if he gets a player, because Shannon Gabriel seems to be in pretty good form. Well, <laughs> yes, he's in good form, but Roach is still one of the top mm -hmm. in the top ten or top twelve bowlers in the world. So, right. mm -hmm. I think on his day, he can, he's the match winner. And the Australian segment of the tour, which is uh, towards the end of the year, obviously a, a, a rebuilt Australian team under Steve Smith, Adam Voges, uh, new vice captain uh, ahead of David Warner because of his injury. Uh, it's a relatively new look Australian team, perhaps the bowling, much stronger than the batting at this stage, but Australia at home, always difficult. Yes, it's difficult. And although it's a new Australian team, you know, their structure is, is stronger than ours. Mm -hmm. you know, so even when they're rebuilding, they, they have better players in terms of better prepared players, mm -hmm. you know, for the conditions and for test cricket, you know. When you see those guys coming to play test cricket, you see that they guys play like 100 or something first it's class games, much. guys mm -hmm. coming in with 15,000 first class runs. When you look at our guys now, you know, we play around, somebody play around 20 games. Oh, over, over five years or four years, you know. Th those guys are better prepared, you know, for international cricket. That's uh, Floyd Reefer talking about the prospects of the West Indies team on their upcoming tour of Sri Lanka and Australia. And earlier we were talking about the West Indies on the 15 team on tour of the UK. And we'll be right back on Massey United Insurances. <laughs> 
Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. So that's it for another week of Mass United Insurance's line and length. Next week, we're going to preview that series with the West Indies in Sri Lanka. Craig Kozier, who's going to be going down to Sri Lanka, he's going to join us in the studio as we preview that series and look around the world at what is happening in the world of cricket. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Until next week, we're back.